Hello, my name is Christine and welcome to today's video. What do you think of my Halloween shirt? Boo! <laughs> Super festive, I know. In today's video, I wanted to show you guys a couple of lower carb uh, family dinner recipes that are super delicioso. And we're gonna start with cream cheese chicken with spaghetti squash. So this is from my garden and I'm gonna cook it in my Instant Pot because spaghetti squash in the Instant Pot is life changing. Stop wasting your time with the microwave. Stop wasting your time with the oven. This, it's like 25 minutes or something like that. People have told me that you can just put the whole thing whole and not chop it up. It feels pretty ballsy. I was gonna try it and then it realized that mine actually doesn't fit. It's too big, the stem is too big. So I am actually going to need to cut this a little bit and then we'll stick this in here and get it going. And while it cooks, we'll prep the chicken. Cutting, I think even if I just cut that off, I could, I could fit it and then I wouldn't have to cut it anymore. But the problem is, oh my gosh, <laughs> why? Oh, a really ripe, I can't even talk. Skitty squash is like ridiculous. I feel like I'm gonna chop off a finger. This, I do not recommend this. Please do not do this at home. Do not do this at home. Ancestors guide me. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what the heck? Ugh, okay, that's too, that's too small of a knife. That's what it is. I need a thicker knife. I have a new knife coming. Why isn't it here yet? I, oh, this is so much easier. Oh my gosh, yeah. We just needed a heavier duty, heavier, heavier duty. <laughs> I can't. A heavier duty knife. There it is. Okay, go. I promise I work out. So sweet. And fit. We're so fit. <laughs> oh yeah. Look at that. Got about a half a cup of water. Don't spill, don't spill, don't spill, don't spill. Oh, yes. Lid, here we go. Oh, I have it backwards actually because I was like showing it to you guys. Okay, here we go. Yes. Seal, yes. And we're gonna go manual. For You know what, I'm still leaving it on 30 because why not? Like it, there's no, there's no real rules here. Guidelines, the natural rules. It's just guidelines. There we go. Garlic Parmesan chicken is what we are putting together. So I think I'm gonna do maybe three butterfly chicken breasts in this baking pan. And I have my oven preheating and a cutting board right here so I can whoosh, my chicken. This recipe actually is really easy to put together. It doesn't take very long. I think it's just really the chicken prep that's gonna take the longest in this case. Ow! I can't seem to put on my gloves today. It's weird. <laughs> this is like such a weird angle. I feel like I need to like squat down here so you can see me. You know, I'm tall, but I'm not that tall. I think I'll go back to the skinny knife for my chicken. Actually, I don't even know if I can fit three chicken breasts on here. We'll just have to see. And here comes Speedy. He smells the chicken. You're only interested in one thing, aren't you? I like butterflying my chicken because I feel like it cooks more evenly. And these are stupid big chicken breasts, like really big. Well, I only fit four. Maybe I'll do another half. This is a nine by 13 dish. Well, they're kind of like overlapping a little bit, but that's gonna, that's gonna have to work. The rest of this chicken, I'm going to just chop Actually, no, I'm not. I think my other recipe for like tomorrow or the next day is just cooked chicken. Just trim it a little bit here and we'll stick this in my other Instant Pot to cook for the other dinner and that's gonna be easy peasy. So that was like a family pack of chicken and I just got two meals out of it with I think a generous amount of chicken. So let me take these off, get rid of all this chicken juice and we will mix up the sauce that goes on this chicken. Eight ounces of cream cheese. Speedy is still over there like licking his chops. Do you guys' dogs come and sniff at you when you're working with meat in the kitchen? I am telling you what, he is eyeing me and shaking like, mommy, give me the meat. This needs to be softened if I didn't say that and mine is not. I will be sticking this in the microwave for not very long, I don't know, 30, 30 seconds maybe, maybe less. Cream cheese, about a half a cup of sour cream. I will eyeball that. It looks close-ish, maybe a little bit more because Sour cream's delicious. Four cloves of garlic. I am going to grate it on my microplane. One of my favorite ways to do it. You could totally use the jarred stuff. I really think the fresh stuff tastes so much better. 
I guess you use garlic powder also. About a half a cup of Parmesan, freshly grated is of course better, but this is fine too and I'll eyeball that as well. That looks close-ish. Some fresh pepper. Uh, fresh pepper. And I am gonna use a little bit of salt, but I'm going to put it on here instead of here because the cheese is actually salty. So I'm just gonna salt the chicken itself. Pepper there as well. And I'm also trying to get rid of this little guy, so that's helpful too. Mix vigorously. Vigorously. Now I'm gonna put my sauce on top of all of this chicken, kind of spread it out a little bit. Like, look how easy this is. Amazing. There's my chicken. Whoop, I don't want it to fall out of the pan. Onto that, we will sprinkle about a half a cup of Parmesan cheese, another half a cup, half a cup of mozzarella cheese, and the other half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Just gonna break up those clumps a little bit. Stick it into a 375 degree oven for 25 to 35 minutes or until the chicken is cooked and we will serve it on our spaghetti squash time. Should be totally cooked. It's very, very hot. So I'm trying to not like burn my fingers here. Now it's very easy to cut in half. Oh, ow. Oh, do you see the steam? Now it's easy to grab a spoon and kind of scrape out the middle part. We don't want that. And since I grew these spaghetti squash myself, I actually think I could keep the seeds, maybe not if I cooked it, but in a raw one, and I can plant them again next year since I grew it myself. Ow, ow, ow. Or you can throw them in your compost pile and see what happens. I'm doing that this year. I'm throwing a ton of like tomato guts into my compost pile. I'm interested to see if I have any volunteer tomatoes. You can get a serving bowl or whatever and a fork and just kind of scrape it off and I'll just fall right out. Spaghetti squash like a boss. And now all you gotta do is just add like butter, salt, pepper, garlic, whatever seasonings you like on your spaghetti squash. Now's the time. Give this video a thumbs up, thanks. Oh, it's so hot. Ah! <laughs> I should be wearing a glove. Oh my gosh, there's a glove here. Oh, there we go. I tell you what, the wheels are always turning. Who can quote that movie? It's a Steve Martin movie. Boom. Let's put the dinner together. In order to give me some dinner inspiration, Green Chef agreed to partner with me on today's video. Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company and they offer you guys meals for a variety of lifestyles, which can include vegan, vegetarian, paleo, and keto, which is the box that I got for today's low carb cooking video. Now, as you could clearly see, Green Chef offers contactless delivery to your doorstep for super easy home cooking. So if you guys are trying to switch up your meal plan, maybe trying to find a new way to eat, Green Chef has a wide variety of high quality, clean ingredients that you can feel good about eating. I have found that the recipes are really, really fast to put together and make. They're easy to follow the step-by-step -step instructions. There's chef tips and pictures to help you along. I think part of the reason that the recipes are so fast to put together is that it includes some pre-made sauces, dressings, and spices, so you can get a huge punch of flavor in very little time. This shrimp recipe here literally took me probably 15 to 20 minutes from reading the recipe to plated dinner. I have done several of the Green Chef boxes now and I truly think that the keto box, in my opinion, is, is my personal favorite. I just feel like the combination of fresh vegetables and proteins with their flavorful sauces have been a huge hit with my family. If you guys wanna try out Green Chef, all you need to do is go to greenchef.us slash frugalfitmom80 and use the code frugalfitmom80 to get 80 buckaroos uh, across your first four boxes, including free shipping on your first box. Link is down below for you guys. You didn't think that you were gonna get through a Christine video without some sort of cooking drama, whether it's flinging food on the floor or me crying because I'm cutting onions. I cannot figure this out, you guys. Uh, the running under the cold water doesn't work for me. Like, I don't know, it's just, I need to wear swimming goggles when I cut onions, truly. This box was so fun because they sent these daikon radishes, which I have never had before in my life. I've seen them at the grocery store, but they're really, really big and kind of scary looking. So I thought that was fun to try these out. I thought once they were sauteed with everything else, they were quite delicious. 
I chopped the broccoli just smaller so you could like fork it with a fork. <laughs> That's horrible, horrible conversation abilities. Uh, it's been a day, you guys. It's been a day. <laughs> Cutting it small enough to eat, like that my children can eat and not choke on a green tree. You know what I'm saying? And all of the vegetables, which was the onions, the radishes, the broccoli right here, and then they had these little bags of slaw, just got sauteed in a huge pan. So I got my big 14-inch skillet with some sesame oil and sauteed those. And while those were cooking, I rinsed off my shrimp. Please rinse off your shrimp. Uh, it has like the shrimp juice that's a little gross. And sprinkled it with the prepackaged spices. It was delicious. Dave thought it was like a blackened seasoning. And I was like, ha, it's not. But I don't really know what it is, but it's delicious. And here are the vegetables in the pan. How gorgeous. Uh, is it just me? Like these bright, bright colors of vegetables, I think is so aesthetically pleasing. It makes me so happy to see this huge pan of bright colors and crunchy textures. It just makes me thrilled. So I cooked these until they were a little soft, added the prepackaged sauce with a little bit of water, sauteed it for a, a few more minutes until it was soft, pulled them out of the pan, and then cooked the shrimp in the same pan and dinner's about there you guys oh so sexy yeah hey plating presentation also if you haven't seen my shirt yet uh uh if you know what this is referencing give this video a like thank you very much do you hear that sizzling we're gonna like presentation this like whoa how many shrimpies do you put on yours? Looks pretty good, right? It's like a beautiful plate of food. Look at that. I just think maybe a couple more or like that. Two more. Oh my gosh. Come on, go big or go home, Christine. Let's go. Oh yeah. We're just doing the whole thing right there. <laughs> yeah. All right, I took some of the extra shrimpies off and some cashews are now on top, but I feel like it's missing something. What is it missing? Hmm, a garnish. I need a garnish on this. Let's find a garnish. Garlic? No. Heirloom tomato from my garden? No. A lemon? No, that's just wrong. No. Ha ha, yes. A fried egg. Now the directions said to do it sunny side up, but we don't like that kind of egg around here. So over easy it is. Here's the completed dish. Tell me that does not look like the most delicious thing on the planet Earth. Well, I mean, I guess if you didn't like shrimp or eggs or vegetables, it would be gross, but I like all of those things. This is going to be one of the easiest casseroles you guys make. I have a 10 by 15 glass baking dish. I have three cooked chicken breasts that I cooked in the instant pot and then chopped over here. I have two bags of broccoli, two pounds-ish of just frozen broccoli. You can kind of see that I saw some ice on some of it. Three cloves of garlic that I kind of sprinkled. You can see it right there. It's in there, it's in there. Next, I will be adding enough ranch dressing, whatever flavor you like, to moisten it, and then some bacon, and then some cheese. So here we go. Tell me when. Say when. I just, I don't know. Eyeball it, guys, eyeball it. <laughs> Oh, oops, I used almost all of it. Well, I like to live dangerously. I also like to live dangerously. Here is my casserole. I added two more ingredients, cheese and bacon. Everything that everybody loves. I did mozzarella and some Monterey Jack just because I had it in the fridge. Mixed everything around. If it looks maybe dry, you can add a little bit more ranch. This looks okay to me. And because mostly everything is cooked, I mean, everything is cooked, we're basically just throwing it in the oven at 375 to melt the cheese and have it be like hot and bubbly. And that's about it. That should only take about 15 minutes. To finish up this low carb video, I thought we could mix up some dessert. So we're going to do a no bake peanut butter bar. There's just a couple of ingredients although some expensive specialty ingredients. I think we're gonna start with some almond flour, which I have right here. Softened butter, creamy peanut butter of whatever your favorite kind is. I mean, Skippy does have sugar in it, so that's something to be aware of. And then I have Swerve, the sugar replacement. This is the confectioner sugar one. Some no sugar chocolate chips. And nope, vanilla. 
I'm gonna mix most of my ingredients together except for the chocolate, because that's gonna go on top. Three quarters of a cup of almond flour. I love these measuring spoons because they come in a three quarter cup measuring, a two third cup measuring, plus all of your standard ones. It's just like made my life so much easier. Who has the time to measure a half a cup plus a quarter cup? Not me. I mean, I'm not gonna measure up my things in two different cups like a savage. Two ounces of butter. That is very specific. Let's get my kitchen scale. If you guys don't have a kitchen scale, uh, they're pretty cheap, around $10, and I find them very, very useful. So I think we're gonna go like negative. So I just put the whole plate on my scale and I'm gonna remove until it says negative two. That's 1.3, 1.7, a little too much. <laughs> that looks like, I don't know, like three tablespoons-ish or so. I say three tablespoons, but because this recipe is like by weight, I just wanna make sure it was accurate. A quarter cup of your confectioner sugar substitute. This is so expensive, by the way. So is, so is this, like so expensive. So I'm gonna say if you're gonna do like low carb, it might just be worth it to skip the desserts if you're trying to save money on your low carb stuff. But if you have, you know, if you have a little bit of extra disposable income, I guess go right ahead. Quarter cup of the sugar, fake sugar. Half a cup of your peanut butter. If you used a, a more natural peanut butter that didn't have sugar in it like Skippy does, is this would be more like a keto dessert. In this case, it's gonna be more like a low carb dessert. <laughs> Half a cup of peanut butter. And then if you've got kids around, you can have them lick your measuring spoon. Okay, seriously. All of my kids at, at different ages have been found with the entire jar of peanut butter and their finger hiding <laughs> and licking it just like straight out of the jar. Uh, I have a video of Andrew doing it when he was a year and a half. He just, he had the jar. It was so, so cute. He had the jar and he was like doing this with his little chubby hand, right? Like this. And his whole face is covered in peanut butter and his whole like fat chubby hand and arm are covered in peanut butter. And I was like, Andrew, what are you doing? Eating peanut butter. <laughs> oh yeah, why is that? I like it. <laughs> Ryan, my youngest is eight right now. Oh my gosh, he's almost nine. What the what? And I just found him hiding like under the coffee table downstairs with a jar and a knife like doing this while he was watching a movie. And then one teaspoon of vanilla, which I'll eyeball like that. And then stir it together and it's gonna be kind of, I mean, it's got peanut butter, so it's gonna be sticky. Oh my gosh, I don't have my spoons. Where are my spoons? I feel like a wooden spoon is a good application here because it's like sturdy. In retrospect, <laughs> I actually don't think a wooden spoon is a good plan. It's more like I should mush it with the back of the spoon, really. What are you making? Um, sugar-free peanut butter bars. Okay, I can hear you guys. So your little whisper whisper isn't working. You're not. <laughs> For, oops, the topping of our peanut butter bars, we're gonna use this sugar-free milk chocolate and we're just gonna melt it in the microwave. I have a half a cup of the chocolate here, microwave for 30 seconds, see you back then. 30 seconds and we're just gonna try and stir it, see if they are totally melted and mine are, that looks pretty good. If yours are not quite there, you can go maybe another 10 seconds. But I notice as you stir, they will continue to melt. So even if it might look a little chunky now, just be patient, give it a second and then it'll be completely smooth and we can add it on top of our peanut butter bars. Now my chocolate is super, super smooth. We're just gonna do a little like drizzle and then I'll spread it out all the way. Now these do need to sit in the refrigerator for an hour to solidify a little bit. You want the chocolate to harden back up before we cut it into bars. Otherwise it'll just be like a goopy mess, right? Make sure you count that time the refrigeration time in your in your prep, like maybe the night before would be a good time to make these. And if you have a larger family, you know, you could 
really easily double this, triple this, and make a ton with a, basically the same amount of prep time. I mean, I'm not going for beauty here. <laughs> it's all about the taste. Here are my peanut butter bars. It's just a super thin layer of chocolate. You can kind of see how thin this is on bottom. So they shouldn't be that big once you actually cut them. It's just, I mean, these are wicked high in calories, even though there's no sugar or very, very little sugar. You could probably cut a good size square like this instead of it having it be this teeny tiny little bite because they are so thin. So into the refrigerator, this goes. Those are all the recipes that I have for you in today's video. They will all be linked down below for you as well as any specific tools that I mentioned in today's video. Once again, if you guys are feeling in a rut with your meals and you wanna try out Green Chef for yourself, don't forget I have a link down below to get $80 off and free shipping off of your first month when you sign up at greenchef.us slash frugalfitmom80. Or you can use the code frugalfitmom80 and it should give you the same deal. So if you guys sign up, tell me which box you like the keto box is by far my favorite. I think the sauces are just so delicious and I love the wide variety of vegetables that they send you. I would have never thought to put together some of the vegetables that they send, but I've just really, really been enjoying the really fresh and flavorful meals that I personally have been getting. It's, it's been really fun to feed my family these different things and have them love it. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye, bye, bye now, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye now, goodbye.